Good evening. It's very late. I'm very sleepy. I know that I have some viewers from all around the world, and I wonder, maybe I have some new viewers. Places like Australia might be like the middle of the day now. Um, I don't know. I've got this music playing. Hello, I'm back. Uh, this is a uh, surprise extra live stream. Uh, I did not use my train whistle even once this morning because I feel like I was overusing it, but I need it. I need to wake up. That did not help. Um, I'm back. So I don't know if anybody tuned in this morning, I had kind of a bit of a disaster <laughs> in a good way. Uh, as, as I mentioned, fa uh, success is failure, going, going from one failure to another with great enthusiasm, as maybe Winston Churchill said, probably way more eloquently and I couldn't even remember. This is not good. I'm very tired. And all I have is water. Coding Train brought to you by H2O. It's hydrogen. It's oxygen. It's water. Right. It's great that I make so much money from this water sponsorship that I got. Just terrific. Okay. Now, um, so I'm here to try to... Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what OP and NERF means uh, in the chat there, uh, Melvin2001. That's, <laughs> well, I'm kinda, that's supposed to be some lingo that I'm not familiar with. Uh, hello to everybody in the chat. We are going to code coffee would be good. You know, I can't, first of all, I really should never be allowed to drink coffee ever. As, as many of you are probably quite aware, I do drink coffee from time to time. Usually, I try to have some light herbal tea while enjoying my live streams. Now, today, I had some this morning. I didn't, have, you know, I'm on, I'm, I could go downstairs to the fourth floor. I'm on the ninth floor of this building. All I got, this is all I got left. <laughs> this has got to keep me hydrated for this coding challenge. <laughs> I'm locked in a room with a green wall, fluorescent lights. It's 75 degrees. I cannot figure out how to get that thermostat to work. However, it will not. Earlier, some of you might have seen earlier today, somebody came and knocked on the door and said I was making way too much noise. The fact that this building is pretty empty right now, I, I feel somewhat confident that that won't happen, but it still could happen. Um, on point over whatever. Okay, so what am I here to do? I'm here to do one coding challenge and one coding challenge only. I probably spent a good hour and a half on this this morning and I actually had everything correct, but there uh, I, I was trying to sort out some web mercator stuff with this API called Mapbox and it just was not working. And um, I, I had some very helpful messages from people on the internet. I should, um, I should figure out how to thank them. Oh, I gotta, all right, let's see here. I'm gonna have to just log into my Twitter account, I think, because I'm not prepared for this. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna, I have them, I'm logged in on this other computer. And I'm gonna go to my notifications. Notifications, uh, you can tweet me. I'm gonna get it right here. It's. 2017. I'm, 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 I'm with it. I know what I'm doing on the internet. I'm a like YouTuber. This is, this is me. 43 on a Friday evening broadcasting Web Mercator math projections. My family is very, very kind to not complain that I was like, I couldn't, it didn't work. I'm not, I'm gonna be home after dinner. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna make it home by kids' bedtime. <laughs> But I've got to make this Web Mercator thing happen. So thank you to my um, wonderful family for um, not um, disowning me for being here. But, and thank you for you watching on a Friday. What are you doing here? That's what I want to know, really. I mean, uh, okay, anyway. Um, so uh, let's see here. What was I looking for? All right, I was going to thank some people. So let me go to mentions. Mentions, apparently, is when somebody mentions me on the social media. It's very exciting. It makes it gives me like a little chemical reaction goes off in my brain. Um, okay, Jasper Breels at Jasper Breels on Twitter. Um, Twitter. Jasper Breels uh, sent me many uh, helpful messages. Um, you can see you can see them all here, and uh, we had a little bit of an exchange, which ended with me saying. I came to a similar conclusion as your comment. I decided I'm just going to redo the tutorial and limit the size to 1024. Um, so uh, I, I'm getting way off topic here because I really should just start the tutorial. But Mapbox, uh, depending on the resolution of the map that you request, 
Um, and the way that the tiling algorithm works, it, th it seems that certain things can go a little wonky uh, past, um, past with certain resolutions and aspect ratios. So uh, thank you, Jasper Briels. Uh, well, who else um, do I need to thank? Ah, uh, I have no idea how to say this. Uh, I had a lot of really helpful messages from, uh, let's see if I can, uh, twitter.com slash. <laughs> I need my progressives. <laughs> the, the screen's so small over here. Here we go. Uh, H Y O J I X I P I T U G. Yoji, oh, I didn't get it right. H Y O J J, no I. J J, J J. There we go. Thank you. Now I'm going to go to tweets and replies. Uh, we can see here a lot of very helpful uh, links. This one in particular, uh, and um, uh, uh, also being puzzled. <laughs> I, first of all, Hyoji writes, don't be mad, colon, apostrophe, parentheses, parentheses. What kind of expression is that? Oh, and the camera went off. <laughs> Got to press that button. I'm like Jack in, or John Locke. Every 30 minutes, I gotta type in the code to get that camera going. Okay, please don't be mad. Uh, um, it's like a winky. <laughs> That's the emoji. But I, first of all, I would never be mad. Anybody who's tweeting me about code and ideas and removing stuff, I don't do it. I, mean, I did. I cheated. I did it the wrong way. I faked it. I didn't use the right algorithm. It's all fun and games and enjoyable and nice and lovely. We're sharing and caring and enjoying ourselves and typing code. So that's, uh, I just emoved. What does emove mean? I think that probably means removed, remove the zoom. So you can read through this thread. There's a lot of helpful uh, information. The documentation uh, is handled differently um, and the zoom is handled differently. So I'm off to it. So I never really got um, pinpointing an exact solution to the correct way to use Mapbox for uh, Web Mercator projection if you're drawing on top of it um, uh, in all cases of resolutions and shapes and sizes. But you know what I realized? The point of the tutorial that I was attempting to make was really not, I mean Mapbox is a great wonderful JavaScript framework so I'd encourage you to use it and explore it. But the point of what I was trying to show you is hey you can make projects that involve a map, that involve data, that involve your own creativity in drawing and design, and here's one way of putting those things together. So I'm going to do the challenge again, and I'm going to just sort of limit myself to uh, a simpler set of resolutions so that the, uh, the visualization comes out correctly, and I will then, at, towards the end, uh, reference other kinds of projections or approaches that you might consider and uh, things that you might look into in terms of map box. So that's my plan. I'm going to look at the... Um, uh, yes, so um, I will, in the, this is our, this live stream will be archived, and yes, I will um, link to, um, I will link to those Twitter accounts in the chat. Now, somebody in the chat is saying, go to Luca. Go to Luca. I will go. See you later. I am off to Luca. I'm back from Luca. I think uh, Luca is something on Twitter. <laughs> Um, I'm running out of water. I'm going to get very dehydrated. You know what happens when I get dehydrated. Mm, okay, we're doing well. We're fine. We're fine. Okay, who's Luca? Do I have some, Maybe I have more notifications. Uh, I'm going to look over here. I, I got I, I to gotta get off my Twitter. It's, not, it's, no, it's no fun to watch someone live stream. Shout out, please. Look at this. This is great. I will definitely give you a shout out uh, on Twitter. Oh, Luca. Mention me, Schiffman. Luca and Harpreet Duraror uh, watching. I should just go to my own mentions. I don't know how to do this. I should log into my... You, if you want to shout out, tweet The Coding Train, because that's the account that I'm logged into here. Ah, I got some already. Notification. So Luca and... Um, Oh, there's some nice French going on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to read this and translate it, okay? This is gonna be fun. Uh, C'est cool, mais j'ai assez corrigé des bugs pour aujourd'hui. Bonne nuit. I think this means, it's cool, but I have corrected the bugs, enough bugs for today. Good night. <laughs> Did I get that right? This is my, this is the only other language that I speak besides English, unfortunately. Uh, pour ceux qui sont encore debout, ou déjà debout, bref, debout. Le, le coding train <laughs> reprend son livre dans Kelka and Stone. I assume QQ means Kelka, maybe? I can't, uh, I can't, I can't translate this one. Oh, I'm going to have to use the translate from French. Uh, 
Oh, also, again, streaming. Already streamed. Briefly streamed. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> back. Uh, yes, there we go. So now I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of people tweeting me. There are shout outs here. Uh, thank you, Leo. Uh, and uh, uh, Lou Wai. I'm waiting for uh, Luca and Harpeet. Harpreet. Um, anyway, okay, I got it off the Twitter. We got to do the coding challenge. I got to get home. What time is it? 7.42. No Portuguese. Sorry. I should learn. I would love to learn more languages. A uh, little bit of Greek. I can do a little bit of Greek. Tiniest, tiniest bit. Uh, Yasu, everybody from Greece. Nobody's watching this from Greece right now. It's the middle of the night. But if you are, Efkaristo, I appreciate it very much. Uh, Tekanye, did I say that right? I'm trying to say how are you. Anyway, okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to move off of this. And I am now going to, it's so getting, it's getting very warm in here. Uh, Vasilis, Vasilis is watching from Greece. That's amazing. Uh, okay, uh, or at least Vasilis is uh, someone from Greece watching. Okay, so I gotta get myself going here. I'm gonna put on a little uh, music. Um, this is the kitten song by Lost. Oh, wait. Oh, resume all. What kitten song by Unicorns Lost? Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. By Lost what else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that. Look what I get. I'm really this is what I'm going to make eventually. Okay, let's do it. Okay, okay I got to focus. 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 Is the music very loud, by the way? <laughs> I open my Adam after at the same time as doing this ridiculous dance. See, what, this is why I'm not allowed to have coffee. But you know what's good about this? I have this like Fitbit thing, and if I do this like dancing stuff, I'm gonna get to 10,000 steps, no problem today. Uh, okay, uh, sketch.js, delete, 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 delete. I'm so I feel in love just with you. Sort of like delete, a, a delete. Nice feeling of relaxation. Is this a song? Everything's gonna be I okay. I think I made this song up. Dream is not. Somebody tell me if this is a song or not. Delete, delete, I'm so in love with you. Delete, delete, I'm so in love with you. Delete, delete, because I say that in my head when I delete stuff. But I don't know if it's something that came from my own head or if it's something that came from somewhere else. Does anybody know? I have no idea. Um, I assume there will be infinite remixes of that song on the internet soon. I'm not that popular, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Um, so let's see here. Um, I am going to put in function setup. And I'm going to put in function draw. I am going to get some web pages open. Code is there. I'm looking, I got to move this up a little bit. Hopefully the, uh, oh, I'm not, I, I lost the Slack chat here. I was in, onto Twitter. Oh, oh my God, way too, the live chat is off topic. Music is a bit loud. Okay, you know what? I turned it down my monitor, so it's very quiet for me. And apparently it's very loud. Okay. Uh, all right. Hillary made the delete song. Who made the, oh, never mind. Ugh. Denise, Denise? Oh, that's a song. Denise, Denise, I'm so in love with you. And I just changed it in my head to delete, delete. Ah, okay, I don't want to play it right now because I'm afraid, let's talk more code. Oh, you come to the wrong place, my friend. I'm very sorry. Um, I don't want to, um, I don't want to play it because I'll, I don't know, worry about copyright or whatever. So, okay, um, here we go. Let's talk more code. Not really something I'm very good at, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, oops, let's see. Uh, control, control C, uh, and then close. New terminal window, CD desktop, earthquake, biz part two. Um, and server, there we go, um, and 
code, and I don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do I dare, I'm gonna be bold and take this out of here, because I don't think I need it. And this is good, what do I have here? Yep, okay, and now I'm gonna go hit refresh. Whoops, hit ref open up the console, hit refresh. I see nothing, that's a good sign. I've got a good font size here. And so map projection, spreadsheet format, Web Mercator, Mapbox, API documentation. Okay, so one thing I need to get to is to the right place. How did I do this before? Um, what I want to do is get to static map uh, documentation. Okay, this is where I want to be. Uh, and then I'm going to need to copy this. And I need my access token also. Access token, uh, and I'll be ready to do this challenge in one second. Create a new access token, access tokens page. Create, now I want to uh, refresh this. Yes. Okay. What's my password? <laughs> What's the chance that I remember what random password I typed in earlier today? All right. Okay, great. I got a new token. Okay. Uh, here we go. Um, so we are ready to do the coding challenge. So I am going to welcome, it's Friday evening and you are watching a person on the internet make a data visualization. <laughs> Good luck to you. I am a person on the internet. So I'm going to do a coding challenge where I take data from um, the USGS, which stands for United States Geographical Service. What does it stand for? Um, but science is a wonderful thing, isn't it? U.S. Geological Survey. Boy, I got that totally wrong. Um, and they provide a lot of data feeds about a lot of things, but in particular earthquake data. And I'm, I'm doing this to just show a sample project that you get a data feed with latitude and longitude which, of, a, of an earth, which is a sphere, of an earth, of the earth, which is a sphere, mapping that to two dimensions, drawing your own stuff, and also putting a world map behind it if you're so interested. And I'm gonna, I probably should just pre get an image of a world map preloaded and not go through the rigmarole of Mapbox, but I'm determined. So it's going to happen. Um, okay. Mm. I'm out of water. I can probably go refill it. I probably should. I'm going to. Okay. Um, all right. I am totally, EK89 asks, is he redoing? I am totally redoing it. I am starting over from nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. The earth is fault, says the architect 21. Okay. Um, here we go. Let me press the button on the camera. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an introduction uh, afterwards. Um, so I sort of explain the tutorial. and. So the first thing, you know what I almost want to do is, now let me do the map first. Okay. Um, I don't know what to put this on to start with, but let's put this on here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here we go. All right. I'm doing this coding challenge now. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this coding challenge is I'm going to grab a map of the world, uh, uh, figuratively grab, I guess, is figuratively. That sounded weird. Let me start over. <laughs> Hello, welcome to this coding challenge. I'm doing it. I'm doing this coding challenge. That sounded very forced and fake. Oh, by the way, I, I, I had to limit myself. I'm limiting myself to the amount of times I can stop or redo. I'm already on two. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, welcome. I'm doing this coding challenge. I have to tell you something. I did it before earlier. It didn't work out so well, but I think this is going to go. I'm starting fresh and I'm feeling confident and excited about it. And here we go. So what am I going to do in this coding challenge? I'm going to look at a lot of things. Number one is I'm going to look at how you can get an image of a world map or, or a zoomed in map or a zoomed out map of this world, the planet Earth that we live in on something like that um, and display that in a JavaScript uh, canvas. So I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at how you can read latitude and longitude values and translate those latitude and longitude values to XY locations in that canvas. And, I'm, and, and as a, a, a way of doing this, I'm going to, I just realized I'm like totally doing the introduction that I plan to do afterwards. So I scratch all that. 
<laughs> Use leaflet. Maybe that's what I should be doing. Ah, great suggestion. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Luca. I'm such a, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker. Luca, I got to go to my mentions. I hope this is, I'm not going to regret this. Uh, I don't see, I don't see, oh, Luca, there we go. Luca, there's Luca. <laughs> Thank you. There's your little shout out. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, now here we go. I, I'm sorry. I was, I was doing the introduction and I really just want to get into the coding challenge. And I'm going to mention all the pieces when I record the introduction later. <laughs> all right. So let's start with this. <laughs> okay, I'm starting this coding challenge now. Here we go. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, there's a lot of pieces to this, but the first thing I want to do is just see the map of the world on the screen, on the canvas. I want to draw it. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. You could find some JPEG. You could draw your own map. You could uh, scan a map. So the, the question you have to answer for yourself, by the way, though, one thing you have to remember is, right, the Earth is a sphere. So, and I'm going to do this visualization in a 2D space, a flat two-dimensional space. So when you take the information that's wrapped around the sphere and peel it off um, into a two-dimensional space, you have to you apply some math. And what that is typically referred to as a projection. So map projections, this is the Wikipedia page, there are a lot of different map projections that have been used uh, historically throughout the ages. Um, this is a medieval depiction of the, I have no idea how to say this, Ecumeni from 1482. Um, there's one uh, of a projection down here that looks a lot like what you would get, um, I'm trying to find it here, if you were to, uh, this is like a cylindrical projection, that's kind of nice. There's one that I'm thinking of uh, that looks kind of like if you were to unpeel an orange. Uh, I can't find it. <laughs> Hold on. Time out. Um, we're going to edit. Sorry. Jonathan Corum, who is, works for the New York Times, I feel like he once tweeted out something. Um, boy, this is really going to, um, let's see. Uh, designer Jonathan Corum uh, uh, did something really great about math projections. I'm never going to be able to find it. But you should look at all this wonderful material <laughs> uh, here on the internet. Okay, uh, uh, never mind. I'm just going to use the Wikipedia page. This is where I'm thinking next time I got to, um, I got to, uh, uh, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what I was looking for. So hold on. I'm going um, I'm going to come back to this. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. There are a lot of different uh, map projections. Um, um, this is one from 1482. This is not something re related just to coding and computer graphics. The idea of how do you represent spherical information, spherical imagery on a two-dimensional surface. A surface. Um, there, have, there are lots throughout history. I'm going to scroll all the way down here. There's one that's kind of, I think, uh, a nice, <laughs> I can't find it now, um, illustration of what I'm talking about. You could imagine if you had an orange and you peeled the orange and you flattened out the peel, what would it look like? It might look like this one over here. Um, Mercator, Mercator projection is one of the uh, kind of standard ones. Um, and, uh, you know, this, I, this looks kind of like a little bit, oh, this is like the Mercator projection. Now, you can see, though, that what happens is things that are close to the top or close to the bottom, when you sort of stretch out the poles of the Earth, become really, really large. So Greenland over here is incredibly massive as compared to, say, Africa, which is kind of close to the, which is there right with the equator, which is not at all accurate. So I think there are a lot of complex questions about the sort of, you know, Western view, essentially, of a lot of these um, uh, map projections. And I think this is a really interesting topic that I'm getting way off track here. But it's important to mention and really think about how you're presenting um, information and what you're highlighting and what's, you know, what's up versus down, what's center versus. And so there's a lot of design considerations there that I think are very important to mention. But what I'm going to use is something of a standard these days uh, called Web Mercator. And Web Mercator uh, is used, from what I understand, by most of the online mapping tutorials you'll find, like Google Maps, OpenStreetMap, MapQuest. Does that even exist? Probably does. Oh, my. All of you who love MapQuest out there, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. It's a wonderful. I'm going to MapQuest that. Do you say that? Does anybody say that? Anyway, um, so this is going on way too long. Okay, so um, what I got to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a map image from uh, Mapbox, and then I need to understand what projection it's using so that I can apply the math to convert my latitude, longitude to an XY location in that pixel canvas. Okay, so um, 
The map, Mapbox, you can, you can find out information at mapbox.com. You'll have to sign up for an account and get an API key and all that sort of stuff. I'll include links in this video's description to where you can do that. And I'm going to use something called a static map. So Mapbox has a, a lot of features that you can embed a map that's zoomable and you can put those little pins in it and do all sorts of stuff with it. I just want to use it to get an image. So the way that I can get an image, for example, is through a, 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 a call, an HTTP request to a particular URL. So I'm going to grab this URL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my code and I'm going to say, I'm going to add a function preload. And I'm going to say, I'm going to have a, a variable called a map image. And I'm going to say map image equals load image. And notice here that there's this piece of the code that says your access token. So this won't work right now if I were to run it. I need to get my API token which I'm going to do right over here. I already am on the page and it's right here. I'm going to click copy. So if you just go to this particular URL, that's where you can create your own access token. Um, you can painstakingly copy mine if you want. I'll probably regenerate it later and then it won't work. But um, okay, so I put that in and then what I want to do is I'm going to say uh, create canvas. Now you'll notice there are a bunch of arguments in here. Um, this is, in this path, this is the latitude longitude of the center. That's the zoom level. And then somewhere in here, 600 by 600. That's the pixel resolution um, that I'm getting. So I'm going to now go and say create canvas, uh, 600, 600. And then I'm just going to say image, map image at 00. zero. So if all goes according to plan, when I go and run this code in the browser, <clears throat> we see there it is. Whoa, what kind of crazy <laughs> angled map thing did I get? Oh my goodness. So I wanted a flat map. <laughs> I might have to um, adjust the <laughs> API call that I just made. Interesting to see that it does that. Uh, what I wanted is, uh, oh, I'm in the class, um, no, oh, uh, dark, I think dark V, so there's a lot of things like dark V9 here. Um, so why is it angled? Oh, you know what it is? It's because there's a lot of arguments here. There's latitude, longitude, we can look at the documentation, uh, zoom level, and then this is like an angle, I think. So if I change this to zero, there we go, I flattened it. So I don't know what the default is. Is this somewhere, I'm guessing like in like San Francisco or something could possibly be, but what I wanna do now is I wanna see a world map. So I'm gonna change the latitude and longitude. I'm just gonna change it to zero, zero, which is going to be at latitude, right there in the, it's not really the center of the world because it's a sphere, like what's the center, huh? But um, our latitude, longitude center, I'm gonna change the zoom level to like four, and then I'm gonna hit refresh. And we see, ooh, uh, let me zoom out some more. I'm actually going to change the zoom level to one. And we can see, there we go. So I've got the world map. Now, I'm, I want to see um, a wider picture of the world map. So I'm going to change, let's change this to uh, 1024 by 512. I think this should behave nicely for us. Oh, but if I do that, I want to change Create Canvas to 1024 uh, 512. So let's refresh that. Oops. Uh, oh, it's just super big now. Oops, nope, <laughs> sorry, I gotta zoom out here a little bit. So there you go. So now you can see I've got the world map with this dark theme and there it is in my P5JS canvas. We're getting somewhere. Now, if I were to do more of this, I would suggest if you're watching and you actually pull this code, I would probably do something where I make sets of variables for width and height and zoom level and all that sort of thing, but I'm just gonna leave this stuff kind of constant for right now. Um, I am going to though, uh, I am, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna leave that stuff constant for right now. So now that I have that, what I need to do is figure out, let's say I have a latitude longitude. So let's say I have a latitude longitude, that is, latitude is zero, longitude is zero. Now, it might be worth me refreshing your memory <laughs> if latitude and longitude are familiar concepts to you, but you've sort of forgotten what exactly they are and how they work. Ah. So we're gonna need a little edit point here because this camera is off. Oh, I forgot to turn these other lights on. No, no, they're on, Never mind. Um, I have a little edit point here, and while I'm taking a pause for an edit point, I am going to um, press this button here just to keep everything rolling. Okay, so um, peeled orange projection, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, 
Okay, live Slack chat. Please stay on topic. <laughs> it actually doesn't really matter. But uh, uh, I, I like to look at it to see if there's, if you have like other general programming stuff you're talking about. Actually, no, don't worry about it. Stay, go off topic. Ignore me, I'm annoying. I've got all these rules all of a sudden. Okay, um, here we go. So let's say I were to try to draw, <laughs> as best as I could, a sphere. And I can kind of represent it with these lines. And by the way, what are these lines? These lines are longitude. So longitude are the lines, I can think of them as like long, because they go long up and down. But they're the vertical lines, and they're really going to map to our x location, because we're going to take this and kind of unfurl it, so to speak, uh, onto, into a flat rectangle. So we want those longitude lines to end up like this. So these are, uh, these, the x values are longitude, and then the y values are latitude. And you know, this being perhaps like 0, 0. Uh, the y values then being uh, latitude. Okay, now, there's another sort of key aspect of this. What is the range of these values? So um, they are described as, as angles, essentially. You can think of them as angles of rotation, in a way, around the center of the Earth. And so if there's a full rotation of 360 degrees, we can kind of go all the way this way to 180 degrees, and then go all the way this way to negative 180 degrees. The thing is, I'm going to need to use radians as a measurement in my code. Um, so that's something we're going to have to sort of think about. This is uh, pi, and this is negative pi. And I have other videos that kind of go over the basics of radians and units of measurement that you could maybe watch and try to find um, if that's a new top concept for you. Now, latitude, on the other hand, gone all the way around is just going halfway up and halfway down in a way. So uh, the range is between 90 and negative 90. And I probably got that wrong. I think 90 is north and negative 90 is south. By the way, if you look up the lat longitude or latitude, if you, if you Google like uh, latitude, uh, longitude latitude of New York City, you'll find the number will be something like 74 degrees west. So 74 degrees, this is actually 180 degrees west. This is 180 degrees east. This is 90 degrees north. This is 90 degrees south. So the negative numbers are what we need to use in the math, but you'll often see them listed as north, south, west, east, which is something you might need to convert uh, depending on what, how your data is formatted. OK, so hopefully that clarifies that a little bit. So I'm actually going to, uh, whoops, I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to do, I'm going to have something called center latitude, center longitude, and then I'm just going to have a variable called latitude, a variable longitude. I would like to pick a city somewhere in the world that's not the United States, that maybe I know <laughs> approximately where it is, <laughs> even though I've got the sort of bad American sense of geography. Um, so let's look for uh, a city. Um, where, where are there a lot of trains? <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of trains in Europe and in Asia, and there's everywhere there's trains. That's a bad, bad. Let, let me let me look for uh, let's look for Shanghai, uh, latitude, longitude. So you're seeing here we've got 31.2304 north, 101.473 east. So let's take this into our code, and let's put that here. I'm going to just comment that put this in comments here. So the latitude is the north number. And the longitude is the east number, and it's not negative. If it were west, it would be negative. And what I want to do now is draw, um, is draw the location, uh, convert it to its x and y. So what I need to do here, and I don't need the draw function, I need to figure out how do I convert those things. Ah, guess what? We're going to just look up the formula. It's going to look kind of terrifying, but I think I'm going to write it for you uh, in code, and it will hopefully be uh, simple. So here we are in Web Mercator. And Web Mercator is based on uh, what, the, what we need to do is to calculate this x and y, we need to apply this formula. So uh, the reason why this number is 128 is web, the standard of Web Mercator is that it's, it's giving you the x, y for a square, where the top left is 0, 0, and the bottom right is 256, 256. So the center is 128, 128. I think actually Mapbox does uh, tiles that are 512. So I think I actually need to change that number to 256. So that really depends on the kind of, again, the system you're using. The zoom level is this um, value of how zo far zoomed in or zoomed out. This lambda here is uh, longitude, and the, the, letter, the Greek letter phi uh, is uh, latitude. Um, so if I write this code, and I'm just going to kind of do this a little bit, I'm going to write a function called um, I'm going to write a separate function for x and y. I could wrap this into one function. I'm going to write a function called um, web merc. I'm just going to call it merc, merc x, and it takes merc x takes in a longitude value, 
And now, what I like to do sometimes with formulas like this is I like to break them into parts. It's rather unnecessary, but I think it'll make us less likely to make a mistake. <laughs> so I'm going to just do the first part. I'm going to call it a, and that is 128 divided by pi times 2 to the zoom level. Right? So 180 divided by pi times 2 to the zoom level. So uh, what is the zoom? The zoom level is uh, right now is something that I've defined here as 1. So this is something that I could make into a variable. I really should make it into a variable. And I'm going to say zoom equals 1. So um, again, I should put that in here, but I'm going to leave that out right now. OK. So, um, so now uh, the, oh, zoom is taken care of. Great. You know what I could do actually is, well, never mind. I could give this Merck x uh, uh, an argument, longitude and zoom level, but I'll just use it as a global variable. OK, that's var a. Now I'm going to say var b, the second part, if I go back to the formula, is just the longitude plus pi. OK, so uh, longitude plus pi. But guess what? One thing I need to make sure, I'm going to have an issue. Well, we'll get to it later. Whether it's degrees or radians is important. The formula is assuming longitude is going to come in in radians. So I have to make sure I remember that. Now I can just say return a times b, right? Because it's this 128 divided by pi times 2 to the zoom level times uh, the longitude plus pi. OK, great. Now, let's write one for y. Merck y, uh, latitude. And we can see here that the part's a little bit more complex. One, the part A is exactly the same. Let's make part B just this tangent part of the equation. So I'm going to say uh, part B is a tangent of <laughs> pi divided by 4 plus phi, which is the latitude divided by 2. Latitude divided by 2. Okay, That's B. And C is log, pi minus log of B. So pi minus log of b. Now you might notice right here that this says ln. Ln means natural log. So logs have a, you know log. What a logarithm is that merits sort of a separate video. But if you see ln, that means natural log base e, which is a special, wonderful number. <laughs> but um, in in most uh, uh, programming frameworks, if you have the log function, it's doing by default a natural log. And you can obviously adjust that to a different base, but so this, this, this maps to it perfectly here, log of b. OK, so now I need to uh, say a times uh, a times c, right? Uh, a times c, because b is just for the purpose of this. So a times c. This is now giving me the y location. OK, I think we're doing well here. Now, what we can do is say, um, so one thing I'm going to do which is kind of unnecessary, but it helps uh, a lot of people. Um, I, I know I'm going to get messages about how I don't need to do this, <laughs> but this helps me think about it. I actually would like to work from the center. So I'm going to translate width divided by 2, height divided by 2. If I do that, whoops, that moves the origin point from the top left to the center. And I'm going to go to my code. I'm going to refresh it. And you're going to see now the image is Oh, the origin is in the center. So I'm going to change image mode to center so that now the image is drawn from the center. So now I'm back. The reason why I'm doing that, it's a little bit weird, but what I want to do uh, is I want to draw everything. The, the value that I'm going to get from this uh, math is relative to a center point. So it's going to be a little easier for me to kind of figure that out this way. So what I want to do first is I want to say var center x equals um, Merck x of, long of longitude, a uh, center longitude. And center y equals Merck y of, of center latitude. Then I want to say uh, x equals Merck x, Merck x of, that, of the longitude. This is the Beijing, I mean, sorry, Shanghai. Uh, longitude, and then the uh, Shanghai latitude. And then what I want to do is, where I'm going to position them on the screen is the difference between those two points. So if CX, CY is the center, wherever that is relative to the center of the window is its location minus that center location. So now I should be able to say, let's make a nice uh, little uh, circle with some alpha. And let's uh, draw an ellipse at that x and y, 20 by 20 pixels. Let's not be afraid. Let's hit refresh. <laughs> ah, OK, so it's not there. What's the problem? I forgot about my units of measurement. 
So uh, this is definitely a problem here, which is that these measurements are in degrees. And the fact is, the calculations are assuming radians. So what I need to do is convert these thing, the, them to radians. So I'm just going to add a line of code here that says longitude equals radians, longitude. And I'm going to say uh, latitude equals radians, latitude. And, and the reason why I'm going to do this is I know that when I go get that earthquake data, I'm going to get uh, values in degrees. Because uh, I've looked at that data before. Okay, so now I'm going to hit refresh. Ah, it's there, but it's not in the right spot. The reason it's not in the right spot is remember how I said map bat box actually uses tiles 512 by 512? And so I'm going to change these to 256. 256, and I'm going to hit refresh. And there we go. That looks right to me. Somebody tell me that's not where Shanghai is. Let's go to the other side and let's look at Vancouver. Vancouver, latitude and longitude. And let's try that out. I'm going to grab this here and put this into my code. And uh, so now I need a uh, latitude of 49.2827. And I need a longitude not of 123.1207 positive, but because it's west, I need to add the negative number there. Okay? And here we go. Let's go back to our code. Hit refresh. There, somebody tell me that's not where Vancouver is. I'm pretty sure I pinpointed it. Now that circle is kind of large. I really shouldn't. I shouldn't do anything that might cause me to discover a mistake. But I'm just going to make that circle a little bit smaller. Hit refresh. And I think that, that looks right dead on where Vancouver is, right? Somebody from Canada, tell me if I've got that wrong. Okay, so um, we're doing well here. So now I've actually done almost everything because what I have now is a framework for, re for taking a latitude and longitude and converting it to an xy that I can draw. So let's go get some data that has lots of latitude and longitude in it. So the data that I'm going to use is from the uh, US Geological Survey. Um, here is the page, USGS, Science for a Changing World. Let me tell you something, science, very important. Wonderful thing. I'm all about the science. I wish I knew more about science. Um, and what they have, what, what USGS website is, in addition to lots of things, I'm on a page which I'll link to in this video's description, is it'll give me uh, data feeds of earthquakes. So I could get just significant earthquakes in the past hour. Um, I think just to get some data but not too much data, let's get all earthquakes in the past day. So I'm going to copy paste this link address and I'm going to go to my code and in preload, I'm going to say uh, earthquakes. Uh, I'm going to make a variable called earthquakes. And in uh, the preload function, oh, let me move this a little. I need more space to look at this code. Um, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say uh, earthquakes equals load strings. Uh, there. And I'm, now notice what it's actually loading is a CSV file. So that file is actually a comma separated value file. It's essentially a spreadsheet. Um, and I can look at it. This is a different one, but if I go to the, I downloaded one already, which is right here. This is actually everything from the last month. And you can see here, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a table. It's a table which starts with time, latitude, longitude. Here's the time, here's the latitude, here's the longitude, and uh, here is, uh, then there's some other things. Magnitude is something that I definitely want to look at because we can use magnitude to decide how large to maybe draw something or what color to draw something. But I'm going to leave most of those kind of interesting design decisions to you uh, to do something more creative with or maybe you're going to do map different kind of data. But what I really want to focus on is just first getting those latitude and longitude. So the way I can do this now is, um, so there is a function in P5 called load table. This is such a simple bit of data that I actually think using load strings is a little bit simpler. I'm going to redo this challenge making a 3D version of it in processing and use load table there just to show the difference. That'll come sometime eventually. So now what I'm going to do here in setup is once I have the data, I'm going to say for var i equals zero, i is less than earthquakes.length. So load strings will give you an array of strings, each string being a line in that data file. So all I need to do with each one of those is use, call a function called split. So I'm going to say var uh, data equals earthquakes index i dot split. And then I'm going to write something kind of weird here. So what I want to do is say, what is the delimiter that I want to split everything up by? Well, I want to split everything up by a comma. But why didn't I just put a comma in quotes? Because normally in JavaScript, you'd put a 
you know, a string in quotes. I use these forward slashes. This is something known as a regular expression, which is a sophisticated way to match a particular pattern of text. And I'll, I'll, I'll link in this video's description to a whole set of tutorials on regular expressions. But here we can simply, the only pattern I want to match is a single comma. So that's going to be easy. So now, if I do that, I'm just going to say console.log data. Um, and let's take a look at what we get in the console. I'm going to kind of move this over here. We can see I'm getting a whole bunch of uh, arrays. So I get an array, and I can see here the first element is the timestamp. The second element is the, uh, I believe it's latitude first, then longitude. Yeah, it has to be because that's negative 166. Some other data about the earthquake, the 2.2 is the magnitude on the Richter scale. Um, and the chat, people are pointing out split with the comma, with, the, with quotes as a string does work also. But in case you end up wanting to do more elaborate splitting, it's kind of useful to have the uh, option of a regular expression. Um, okay, so I am going to now, uh, um, um, I am going to, what am I doing here? Um, ah, so what do I want to do? The latitude is the first, is not the first, it's, if I go back to this, it's, this is element zero, element one, element two. So latitude is index one of that array. Latitude is data index one. Longitude is data index two. And then guess what? All I need to do is take this, this exact same code. Once I get that latitude and longitude, convert it to x and y, draw a little circle. And now we will see, and I'm going to take out this console log. I don't think I need that. And move over here, and I'm going to hit refresh. And there we go. These are all the earthquakes that have happened uh, in the last, uh, what was this, the last hour, I think, did I do? Let's go get the last, uh, now that we see this is working, let's go grab, um, let's go grab all earthquakes from the past 30 days. That's going to be a lot. Um, is that too ambitious of me? So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just paste this here. And I'm going to uh, do this. And I'm going to comment out this line of code. So I can now, uh, well, this is awkward to do here. I'm going to paste this in. Oops, I, I must have gotten rid of a quote or something. Yep, got rid of the end there. OK. So, so many ways I could make this code a little bit nicer, but that should do. Now, I'm going to refresh. Here we go. It's going to take a little while. This is a lot of data. Actually, it didn't take that long. Look at that. There you can see all the earthquakes from uh, the last month. And, you know, things that I could do to this. I could, um, first of all, I could think about zooming in on a certain part by changing the zoom level and the width and the height of the map and that sort of thing. You want to be careful. Uh, you know, again, the way that um, the way that Mapbox works, if you start playing around with the zoom, I would, if you want, I would, I would not make the width or height greater than 1024. And it actually seems to work really nicely if you keep that as a multiple of like 256 or, um, but it, I don't think that should be required. But, um, you know, play around with it. I could, um, you, you could change, but also you could just think about animating it. You could, uh, and one thing that I would like to do that I think is worth doing is just drawing these with the size based on magnitude. So let's figure out, let's look at how we would do that. So right now, um, where I'm drawing the size is just here, 8, 8. So what is the actual size in the data? It is um, lo latitude, longitude, depth, magnitude. So I'm just going to use the magnitude, which is 1, 2, 3, index 4. So let's go back to the code, and um, I'm going to say uh, var uh, m for magnitude, or magnitude equals data index 3. And then I'm going to do something wildly not accurate. But I'm just going to get started with this, just so we can see something. I'm going to say var uh, diameter equals map the magnitude from a range from 0 to 10 to a range from 0 to 2 to uh, 60. So I'm just going to take that Richter scale magnitude and map it. Again, there's lots of mathematical problems with what I'm doing. But just to get something on the screen that's got some difference, I'm going to put this D now into here. And we can run this. Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> We've got some, what did I do wrong? Did I get the wrong? Oh, I said three. It should be four. <laughs> I was using the wrong value. OK, so we can see we've got something. But look at this. There aren't really lots of earthquakes of such like large magnitudes happening all the time all over the place. And the reason why this is, there's a couple reasons why this is terribly inaccurate. And uh, let me find my eraser. Two fundamental reasons. Number one is magnitude on the Richter scale for earthquakes is measured, uh, if, if I'm correct, in, in, in a logarithmic scale. Meaning, uh, if I have an earthquake of magnitude 5, and I have an earthquake of magnitude 6, 
This earthquake is actually 10 times as powerful as the earthquake of magnitude 5. Somebody in the chat tell me if I got that wrong. <laughs> so I could come back and correct it. Um, so that's one thing. So I need to think about drawing. The other thing that's really quite important is here is when I take a circle and I give it a di and it, let's say it has a diameter of uh, 4, which means it has a radius of 2, and then I have another circle that has a diameter twice the size of 8, which means a radius of 4. The thing that I'm seeing visually is the area of it. And the area is pi r squared. So the area of this is 4 pi, and the area of this is 16 pi. So I'm actually drawing, this is something that is four times as large as this, but the radius is only twice. So I need to account for that when I'm visualizing stuff using circles. That's kind of an important, you know, if I were just doing population, for example, I wouldn't map population directly to diameter. I would map it to the square, I would map it to the square root, the square root of population to diameter, something like that. We're going to get that right as we come over here. Okay. Um, so. Um, yeah, a great suggestion in the chat, by the way, from Alka is a, an exercise that somebody could do is um, could think about like animating, uh, doing a time lapse. So since I have, since you have 30 days worth of this, or actually having this update every five minutes uh, with recent earthquakes and showing them in real time. So lots of possibilities of things you could do here. Um, okay, so let's go back and try to make this a bit more accurate. Number one is let's take the magnitude. Um, so let's try to think about this. I need to unlog it. Wait, hold on. I just need to take a pause for a second. Um, I didn't switch the camera, thank goodness, because I need a pause anyway. I forgot to switch the camera. Okay, no worries, everybody. What did I, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to pretend that I get that great suggestion again from Alka. <laughs> I'm out of water. Can I go refill my water? I want to think about, um, before I do this, yeah, 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 before I do this, let me think about uh, how I need to do this, actually, um, for a second, because I'm, a, it's, it's, oh my God, it's 8.30 at night. Oh my God, it's getting really late. <laughs> I'm almost done, which is thank, good, thankfully. Um, what I need to do is take the magnitude and um, it should be, I should set it to the power of t t 10, which is such, it makes it such a huge number, right? So if I want to get, if like right, I would say magnitude equals power, magnitude, to the tenth power, so it's it's that much. It's ten times larger, and then I would um, also um, then take the square root of it. If I'm going, and then this would become zero, and this would be like the square root of ten times ten, and then do that between zero and sixty. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I didn't say, um, I didn't say 10, no, no, sorry, square root of power 10 to the 10, of course, because that's sort of like the maximum. Okay, now I don't see anything, because there's no, probably no, um, so let me, um, let's pretend, what's the max, let's, in that data, I probably have just like, um, I probably have like a maximum of like a, you know, of, oh, whoops, this makes no, that, oh, I didn't do this correctly. Let me do this again. Power 10 to the 10. Wait, wait, wait. Square root of power 10 to the 10. Let's see if that's right. No, but yeah, I did it. Yeah, okay. So, oh yeah, so this looks right. So this was a recent really big earthquake, right? Didn't someone, I, I saw in the news that there was a recent large earthquake over there. So we can see that this is more accurate. So one thing I can do, I think I'm doing this correctly, but okay, so I'll fiddle with this. Anybody in the chat want to tell me, um, that I did this wrong <laughs> before I go. So I'm going to come back. Let me undo all this. Let me make sure there are no emergency text messages on my phone. I see none. I see that Siraj uploaded a, some sort of deep learning video. You should all just go watch that right now. <laughs> uh, okay, let me go back to here. So where, where am I coming back into this tutorial? I think this is where I left it, right? I left it here. Then I was over here. Then I came, Alka, I think I want to uh, refer to that suggestion when I get to the end of the video. So I hopefully, I, and talk about ideas that people could have. Uh, it's a great suggestion. Uh, when, I, when I give so, I will, I will try to remember to do that. So I'm going to fake the walking back, pressing the button, and uh, <laughs> continuing the tutorial. 
OK. So if we come back over here now, I can start to implement some of this math into the actual code itself. So looking at the code, um, uh, the magnitude, what I want to do with the magnitude, really, if, if the magnitude is 5 and the, uh, the, rich, and, and the magnitude of 6 is 10 times that, what I can say is magnitude equals uh, itself to the 10th power. So this is kind of un, un, reverse inverse logarithm, logarithm you get. <laughs> inverse logarithm. I'm going to actually set it to the power of 10. Now the other thing I want to do is take the square root of it because ultimately um, I'm going to map that to the diameter of a particular ellipse. So I also want to say magnitude equals the square root of itself. So now this mapping, instead of going from 0 to 10, meaning the, the, the sort of maximum on the Richter scale of 10, I don't know if that's an actual maximum. I should look up the Richter scale. Um, but what I want to do is uh, um, get a new maximum. So I'm going to say uh, var mag max equals power, the square root of 10 to the 10th power. So if 10 is my maximum magnitude, um, then I want to uh, make that the maximum. And then, so the mapping now goes from here to here. And let's take a look at that. And we can see now almost everything has disappeared because most of the earthquakes are really small. But there was, I believe, recently I saw in the news, a very large earthquake. Um, I don't know, I should look this up where this was, but um, I'm pretty sure I've got things accurate here. We could, we could look into the data and see what this is. I could also try to make this a bit more, everything a bit more visible. One thing is I could say, give me a stroke of color to put around the circles. And I could also you know, make this 180, for example, to really sort of like emphasize. So now we can see, you can see lots and lots of tiny earthquakes up along here, lots and lots of tiny earthquakes here, and really some larger ones over and around here. So I think we've done it. This is now mapping earthquakes. Um, I did it wrong. I totally did it wrong. Stop everything. It's not, uh, thank you, this is not correct. It should, to actually reverse the logarithm, it has to be 10 to the magnitude's power, right? I'm sorry about that. You know, everybody's screaming about at me watching this video. I wonder if I should just go all the way back and redo this, because people are going to watch it and get it. But maybe it's fine to have this wrong. Should I just go back? Um, so uh, in other words, uh, uh, 10 to the 4 is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. 10 to the 5 is, is 10 to the 4 times 10. So this is really how it works. So I actually had it quite wrong there. So let's take a look at that. Um, and that should, you know, it's really the same idea, but it's going to, you know, make it a bit more. This one actually was fine because both of these were 10. Uh, so I think the earthquakes are going to get quite a bit smaller, actually, the small ones. And you can see, there we go. So I got the similar effect. Apologies for that mathematical error. <laughs> and now uh, I think, you know, those of you who you can enjoy, see the process about how I constantly make mistakes, but I think I have it right here now. And I could change the mapping, I could change the color. Um, Alka in the chat made a great suggestion of if you want an exercise here, see if you can create a time lapse version of this. So actually use the timestamps and have us see the earthquakes all pop up over time, over 30 days, but have that all happen in 30 seconds. You could also uh, write it so that you refresh the, the, the data query. So if you look here on the, um, Web page here um, on the on the web page here. Oh no, I'm on the wrong web page. If you look here on what am I looking for? Ah, the USGS website. You can see that you can get every five minutes earthquakes updated from the past hour. So this would be interesting to think about how you might animate them and refresh the data every five minutes. So I hope that you uh, uh, the code here will be linked. I hope that you make something with this. Um, I, uh, if, uh, or even if you just use this to create some other type of mapping uh, project, please share it with me. Share it in the comments or share it at Shipman on Twitter. Um, thanks for watching and another coding challenge. Okay. So now I need to throw away the first line of data. All right. Good point. So big deal. Uh, it, it works anyway because it just ignores it. But let me, um, let me fix that just to make, I'll, I'll fix it in the code so I remember later. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. Okay, so what I want to do now is let me see if I can get this, uh, uh, do this. So what's the native? Oh, 1024. Let me just do this. Uh, so I'm going to leave this, I'm going to do an intro with it on the screen like this, although now we're missing the. Um, I guess the aspect ratio is off. So let me do this. Okay. 
So I'm going to do an intro like this. Okay. Because the world does not revolve around the United States of America, contrary to what some people probably think. Um, okay. So is this a good opening image? I think it will be. Okay. So uh, I need to get a tissue. And I need to think about some ridiculous shtick to do <laughs> in my intro. <laughs> the train doo -doo -doo goes across Africa and into India. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Here, now I'm a, I'm a person on the internet on a Friday evening, almost like 8.30 at night, playing with toy trains. Rosie, Reneas, I think that's, I think I'm going to leave that out. Okay. Um, I gotta do a quick intro, then I'm gonna say goodbye. Um, and do I dare try to put the sound in? I'm gonna do it. It's the sound was loud. Somebody said. So let me turn it down. Freight train. Oh, it's not playing. Resume. Broken. Right. It does not. Sorry. Frozen. This is a. Okay. Oh, hello. Uh, welcome. No, no, I'm not going to do the stupid hello thing. <laughs> that was such a failure. I should just do a regular coding challenge. No, I got to do my, my ridiculous thing. Okay, one more time. See, I really need my sound system where I can just like do this in a much better way. Hello, this is a train. Welcome, it's pulling into the station and it brought with us a map of the world. And what this map of the world is showing you is little dots everywhere an earthquake has occurred in the last 30 days. And the dots are actually sized according to the magnitude of that earthquake. And that's exactly what I'm gonna build in this particular coding challenge. So a little while ago, I built this from scratch. <laughs> and it involves a lot of pieces. So the, the point of this coding challenge is really to learn about the idea of mapping data in a world like the Earth that's a sphere in the two-dimensional space. So you need to learn about projections, latitude, longitude, how to convert latitude, longitude to pixel XY space, and how to do that based on what you're, how to get a data source in, how to then draw it. And so that's what I'm doing. The pieces here is I'm getting this image of the world map from a, a, an API called mapbox.js, but certainly you could, you know, you have your own image, you drew an image, you designed an image, you got it from somewhere else. As long as you know how that image was made, you can, you can do the same kind of project that I'm doing in this particular video. I'm also getting earthquake data from the USGS, the United States, the US uh, Geological Survey. They have lots of wonderful scientific data that you can experiment with. Um, and then I'm using P5JS to draw the image of the world and then draw all these circles. Now, one thing I want to mention is towards the end of this video, I work on something to try to scale the size of the circles uh, according to the magnitude of the earthquake. And I have a little bit of math backwards for probably about five minutes of the video. Someone in the chat points it out and then I correct it. So if you're watching and you realize like, oh, the math was backwards there, that's what happens. But by the end, I'm pretty sure I have the math right. But if I have it wrong, boy, do I know that I'm gonna hear about it in the comments. So I look forward to hearing your feedback, your suggestions. I hope you make something with this. You share it with me, um, at Schiffman on Twitter, and that you um, um, enjoy this ride on the coding train. See you soon. Okay, um, all right, how did I do today, everybody? I came back, this was a live stream about one hour. I did a coding challenge, it made sense, it worked. I don't think I had too many horrible errors in it. I feel redeemed. I feel like it's time for a lullaby. <laughs> Awkward silence. Oh, I, for a second I thought I forgot to hit record to disc. I was like, oh my god, I didn't record this whole thing to disk. <laughs> um, and now, this by the way is the only lullaby, when I, did, when I googled lullaby public domain, I got this from freemusicarchive.org. So while this plays, I am going to uh, see if there's any comments in the chat. 10 out of 10. Uh, all right, thank you everybody for the nice video. How many people are watching right now? I can't see that in my, I guess if I go over here, I can see it. 494, I guess Friday night is not as popular of a time. 
Um, who is the guy who always writes in caps lock? I have no idea. But I know somebody who writes a lot in caps lock right now, and I find it incredibly irritating. <laughs> Maybe you know who I'm talking about. Uh, any tips for being so enthusiastic and upbeat? No. <laughs> uh, I should give you some tips. That was a rude answer. Um, I don't know. Just don't worry about things so much. That's a terrible answer, too. I, I, you know, I don't know that I walk through life like this, but I do try to bring some energy and enthusiasm to the channel because people seem to respond to it and enjoy it. Um, oh, right. So a lot of people just left when I finished it. Okay. Uh, that's nice to hear. Um, okay. There should be a little... A Ponce from France, who, by the way, is, um, has a wonderful YouTube channel, I believe, with a lot of stuff in French. Thank you for staying up so late to watch this. That's crazy. I can't believe you did that. I'm so impressed. Uh, requested a little dance, which is... I think, I think maybe, though, I just need to have a softer dance. I don't like that the soundboard thing is there, so let's bring this back up. This will be good, watch this. <laughs> it doesn't really work because I get cut off. <laughs> Try that again. You should also turn this off right now. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I've got to go. Uh, um, please do. Um, and how many viewers did I lose? Um, yeah, some, I'm sure someone will turn that into a GIF. Uh, I look forward to seeing that. And hopefully all these videos. And oh, by the way, um, I'm very excited to announce that next week, I will be premiering a video with special guest Emily Shia, and she made a uh, Matrix Rain simulation. It's fantastic. So it's going to be about a 45-minute coding challenge that she's going to come and walk from beginning to end to make Matrix Rain in P5. So I'm really excited for that to come out. Okay, so um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for this uh, wonderful uh, evening, little surprise, extra coding challenge. I haven't had any dinner. <laughs> I've barely checked my email all day. I've actually just mostly been in this room. I, I have this like fear also that I'm gonna leave <laughs> and like this whole building's gonna be shut down. <laughs> I'm like not gonna be able to get outside or the alarms are gonna get set off. But, I, I, but I've never been on this floor um, so late. So um, thanks everybody for watching. I'm gonna uh, turn this off and I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you at this point next Friday, 10.30 a.m. Um, that's my plan. I got to figure out, there was a little bit of an issue with sound and me being too loud, so I've got to check in with some people to make sure that Friday morning time slot isn't going to be a big problem, but uh, I will send out a tweet or send something to them in my email list or whatever um, if I change the time for next week. Okay, thanks everybody, and see you soon. Bye-bye.